now moving on from the uh, steps of attack um, back to something more directly involved in investigation and extremely important I cannot overemphasize this enough if you if you remember nothing from this entire section on investigation remember the chain of custody or chain of evidence the, the two terms are basically synonymous um, this is the the verification the authentication that the evidence that has been collected has not been changed that it is reliable that it does tell the story that is being presented in court uh, that it has not been manufactured that it has not been edited modified or amended uh, particularly after it has been collected um, so uh, this is this is vitally important I, I will uh, give you one example when it worked to my advantage um, a while ago um, car rental companies uh, decided that they were going to try and uh, uh, renovate their fleets at customer expense maybe we'll put it that way um, that uh, they would get really pushy about any damage to cars and uh, I mean it, it varies it has varied at different times um, over the years uh, I certain times you had to go through uh, you know with a representative of the company uh, marking any ding or scratch on the car uh, so that you wouldn't get charged other times they would you know just be fairly lax about it in this uh, particular period followed a period of, of laxity but uh, um, as it happened I, I had uh, been assigned to do a CISSP seminar uh, and uh, it was within driving range and so instead of you know flying I just rented a car and drove down and did it anyways when I uh, having uh, had various experiences in the past uh, I always did do a walk around myself and I noted uh, a few uh, marks on the car uh, got one of the forms wrote it all up uh, had one of their people uh, sign it off went down did the seminar you know uh, brought the car back paid for it figured that was the end of it no I got a call uh, a little while later it wasn't too long and uh, somebody from the car rental company said well uh, there was a uh, there was a dent in the door and you have to pay for it and I said well there was a dent in the door when I got the car from you guys I'm not gonna pay for it uh, and uh, this went back and forth at different levels uh, you know originally it had been somebody from the local agency that I was talking to and then a manager and then a regional manager and then somebody from uh, a regional office and, and uh, he uh, he was pushing this and, and I said look you know it, it was a dent uh, I marked it on the sheet and I've got a copy here in front of me uh, showing that mark and he said yes but that mark is labeled scratch and <laughs> I uh, took a uh, breath because I knew I had just one as soon as he said that and I said it doesn't say scratch not on my copy oh he said well we'll have to look into this and as I fully expected I never heard anything 
back from them. Because, of course, the fact that my copy, which was a carbon copy of the original, uh, didn't say scratch, and his copy did say scratch, meant that in the interim, somebody had altered their copy. That meant, I mean, aside from whether it was a ding or a scratch or anything else, what it meant was that their evidence was no longer of any use in court. They, they could not do anything legally. Uh, they, you know, they could hassle me on the, all they wanted to, but they knew, and they knew I knew, that they hadn't got a leg to stand on as soon as it showed up in court. You know, it, uh, no lawyer would, would even consider uh, taking a case on that basis because someone in their office had altered the evidence. And as soon as the evidence is altered, it doesn't matter how it's altered. It is proven to be alterable and altered and therefore is invalid and of absolutely no use as evidence any longer. Now, as I say, it doesn't, you know, the, the details don't particularly matter. As soon as you have demonstrated that the evidence has been altered, it is useless as evidence. And we're going to go uh, into evidence as we get into the next uh, uh, section here. But uh, this is particularly important with regard to digital evidence because digital evidence it, you know as we keep on saying it's all just ones and zeros and when you flip a bit there is nothing to say who flipped it what it was originally when it was flipped you know i i mean there are certain things in in terms of a fire overall file overall but in terms of uh you know there's ways of altering it with a sector editor without going into the operating system so the operating system doesn't know when it was changed that it was changed what the original value was who did it that sort of thing so um you have to be really really careful with digital evidence that is why we insist on bit image copies. That is why um, when you are presenting evidence in, in court, um, the, the interpretation may be done by commercial software that goes through the operating system, but the, it has to be backed up by a bit image copy that has been taken as directly from the hardware media as possible. And that, uh, it, you know, I think we'll get into the details of how you do this uh, in a little while, but um, just the, the fact of the, the chain of evidence, this chain of custody, the importance of how, uh, how that works, um, the importance, the significance of, of taking care of being able to prove that nobody made any modifications. That is absolutely vital. Uh, it is, uh, you know, that, that is how you rely on evidence. The evidence is evidence. The evidence is what tells the story. And if the evidence has been changed, the story hasn't got a leg to stand on anymore.